Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and an overview and some benchmarks on this new video card from HIS. This is the HIS 7970X. Features the AMD Radeon HD 7970 GPU as well as a custom cooler and overclock. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is of course based on the AMD Radeon HD 7970 GPU. It's codenamed Tahiti XT. It's based on the 28 nanometer GCN architecture from AMD. Uh, it features uh, 32 ROPs, or Raster Operations pi Pipelines, 2048 shaders, and uh, this is a gigahertz edition, which means that by default the uh, clock speed on the GPU is going to be 1000 megahertz, although this uh, particular 7970X is factory overclocked to 1050 megahertz. You can also use the included iTurbo software to overclock that even further. You can also use the Catalyst software. Uh, that's available from AMD. Over on the right side you'll notice, look, they've actually included an active mini display port single link DVI adapter. So you can set up iFinity 3 right out of the box and uh, you also get some dirt short showdown options in there. A little bit of more information here on uh, this side of the box. Three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, so particularly useful if you're running at high resolutions. Uh, that memory is clocked at uh, 1500 megahertz, it's 384 bit bus and it gives you a total bandwidth of 288 gigabytes per second. This is a PCI Express Gen 3 card, but don't worry, it's also backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2. Supports 4K resolutions. You also get an HDMI out on there. A little funny thing I like to point out on here, they've actually indicated that make sure you're using this in a PCI Express slot, not an AGP slot. AGP's fairly outdated. On the back of the box here, we see a few more features. Uh, we get X Elements, which is, what is that? Oh, X Elements is referring to their power delivery. Uh, so for the 7970X for PWM phases, we have 18 plus 1 plus 1. Uh, 8 plus 8 pin power inputs are required. And the memory input is shared via the 8 pin input connectors. And gives you a comparison there with the AMD reference board inputs. So it's also capable of iFinity 6 and iFinity 5 right out of the box. That means if you have lots of monitors, you can connect them all to the uh, displays, or dis I'm sorry, the display outputs on this card, you'll see them all listed right there. You also have a uh, GPU voltage indicator light on the board uh, that will glow green, yellow, or red. You also have a fan speed indicator light that will actually change colors depending on the fan speed. And you also have an overheat indicator which will indicate if the card is overheating, which I, well, I can't say I'll guarantee you it won't, but in all of my tests this card runs very, very, very cool. Finally over here, a quick diagram that I'm going to show you a closer look at in a minute. This features the IceQ X2 cooling technology from HIS. Let's take a look inside the box and go over our accessories. Video cards, well, video card's not in there. That's because I already took it out and benchmarked it. Uh, inside here we have the accessories, of course. Some more information here on the weight lifter. Okay, so this is the weight lifter. This is a bracket, a support bracket that you can put on the bottom of your computer. And as you can see in the truck there with the computers on it, uh, this will provide extra support for the video card, uh, particularly if you have a heavier video card. Uh, the bracket on the PCI slot can tend to get a bit of a stress on it. Also, sometimes they tend to droop a bit, so if, uh, particularly if you're going to be moving your computer around a bit, you might want to install that and give your card some extra support. Also, we have the ubiquitous uh, DVI to VGA adapter right there, so 15-pin D-sub connector there for VGA. Uh, if you have an older monitor, you can use that. You also have the included um, mini display port to DVI adapter right there. So this is an active uh, adapter and this is very handy because as mentioned it will help you set up various affinity configurations. Also it's nice to have an adapter for the mini display ports because not everyone has those adapters on hand and ready. This is this is yet yet some more information on installing that little weightlifter thing. What is this? Ooh, ooh it's a free game. Let me make sure that I'm not going to share the code. Okay, here we go. Free copy of uh, Dirt Showdown. That's a nice little value add-on right there. Newest version of Dirt. We also have some included uh, documentation, I'm guessing, in here. I haven't looked at any of this stuff yet, even though I've already taken the card out and benchmarked it. Okay, so we have the HIS uh, installation disk right there and drivers. Uh, you can generally find more updated versions of the drivers on the AMD website for this card. You also have an HIS graphics card multilingual installation guide. Your little HIS sticker right there. If you want to put that on your case, you can. And then you have a crossfire bridge. You can set this up in two-way or three-way. I guess you could also do four-way uh, crossfire X with this card since you have all the right connectors. And then finally here uh, you have the iTurbo graphics card assistant installer. And I'm guessing you can probably also download an updated version of this from the HIS website. 
Now we're going to look at the card itself. I'm going to start off with the measurement here. And as you can see, measured from the bracket, we got about 11 and 3 quarters inches of length on the cooler itself. The cooler does extend a bit beyond the PCB for this card, which as you can see there on the bottom is a uh, sort of a greenish blue color. And uh, but as you can see, there's the extension of the cooler itself. And the cooler, I will say, for being as sizable as it is, is very effective. Uh, I ran quite a few benchmarks on this card. Uh, I think the hottest it ever got was maybe 62, 63 degrees Celsius, which is a big improvement, particularly over the reference design card. Uh, just as far as temperatures go, I do have a, a reference design. This is actually a 7950, but uh, as far as the look and size of everything, it is roughly the same. So you can see there, it's definitely a bit bigger, uh, definitely uses a bit more power than the 7970 reference, uh, but the trade-off there is that it runs very cool. It also runs very quiet. So we have the IceQ X2 or X squared cooler uh, right here. So you have two fans in the middle. Those are directing air down over a very sizable uh, bit uh, section of, of aluminum fins. So as you can see, the fins extend all the way across the length of the card. Uh, we also have some heat pipes. So we have uh, couple heat pipes sticking out on this side, a uh, fatter one over here, 8 millimeter, and a 6 millimeter one right there. We've also got three more heat pipes on the opposite side, once again a larger one and a couple smaller ones, so those are going to be channeling heat away from the GPU across and out into those fins so that the uh, moving air from the fans can direct the uh, heat away from the GPU keep all your components cool. Also the benefit of having uh, fans in this particular configuration is you have uh, some power delivery, and I don't know if you can see where this bracket is right here, the black bracket, that extends across quite a few of the uh, MOSFETs for the power delivery. You can see the choke sitting in there right next to it, and that is going to help keep the power delivery cool as well, and uh, it's going to help for overclocks and keeping your power components cool. Uh, but also you'll notice that those components are situated right beneath this fan right here, so that's going to provide some extra airflow over those, again, keeping them cool keeping your card more stable and making sure that the fans don't have to spin up any higher than they need to. And my fans never had to spin up. Now the card remains very quiet as well as cool while it's under load. And uh, speaking of that bracket, let me just flip around to this side so you guys can see. Uh, it extends all the way from the base of the card, or the, the connection point here at the PCI bracket, all the way across uh, the, the bottom of the card. So it's providing some extra support as well as that uh, added heat dissipation from the components that it's coming into contact with. Uh, down here, we have the power connector, so the uh, mentioned on the box, two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors are required for this card, so make sure that your uh, power supply has enough juice to handle that. Flipping around here, we can see the connector. Again, this is a PCI Express Gen 3 card, uh, so if you're running a newer system, uh, you can connect to PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, Gen 3 gives you some bandwidth increases, effectively doubles the bandwidth, is also by, does that primarily by improving the efficiency of the bus. Uh, but again, you are not going to saturate even a PCI Express Gen 2 bus uh, with these current generation cards. So don't worry if you're running an older system, you can still connect the card. It's only going to be uh, sort of a few percentage points difference but from PCI Express Gen 2 to Gen 3. Here on the back of the card, now uh, we can see all of our connectors. We also have a button right there. You notice it has sort of a, a blue on the side. Uh, you, have, you have to kind of look at it from the side. There's the button. So a blue button right there, and that's uh, going to put it into overclock mode. Again, uh, overclock mode on this is going to instantly do uh, 1,050 megahertz, so it gives you a 50 megahertz overclock. And of course, you can go beyond that if you so desire. You get a little bit of ventilation points right there at the back. You also have a dual link DVI connector. And then at the bottom here, you have uh, the HDMI connector, and then you have four total uh, mini display port connectors. Up here on the top right, you can see you have two Crossfire X connectors. So again, support for two-way, three-way, or four-way Crossfire X. And then, of course, you have the custom PCB here at the bottom, designed by HIS. And uh, also, please bear in mind that apart from the length of the card, you do have some extra height on the card. So you can see the PCAI bracket actually extends up to right about there. Then you've got another good inch or so of height on the card on top of that, which shouldn't really conflict in most uh, computer configurations, but it is something to keep in mind. And then in most computers, when you have the card actually installed and plugged in, that is the side you'll, that you'll be looking at. So you get a good look at the uh, HIS logo right there, as well as the heat pipes extending out into the fin array. Next up, we're going to move on into some benchmarks. And I ran this card through our full gamut of benchmarks. Uh, I wanted to point out I'm running uh, the current existing Wickle certified uh, AMD Catalyst driver, so that's 12.10, although the 12.11 betas came out while I was running this. So I also ran the final benchmark, that's Battlefield 3, in 12.10 and 12.11 mode, and it did see a nice performance increase in there. So our current test bed that we're running 
is uh, based on a Z77 platform. We have a 3570K processor. Uh, so we are running at PCI Express Gen 3. And here are your benchmarks. <laughs> So those are our benchmarks, and as you can see, the 70, 7970X performs very well in all of our tests, and you'll even notice a nice 5-10% to 10 improvement in the 12.11 beta drivers versus the 12.10 drivers that are currently out as of the filming of this video. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. This has been the HIS Radeon HD 7970X with the Ice Q X2 cooler and uh, all the good stuff that you can see right here. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.